Jesus is alive again. Jesus has given us complete liberation. And we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. With that, may we all greet one another. May we be the spiritual Barnabas. With that, the title for today is The Age That Needs Barnabas. The Book of Acts shows many important figures that were used before God. In the early chapters of the book, the name Peter and John frequently appear. Works of bringing back 3,005 thousand people arose as Peter proclaimed the redemption of Jesus Christ on the cross and the gospel of resurrection. He spread the gospel in Jerusalem as he did the works of wonders and signs and rose the lame in the name of Jesus Christ. The next is Stephen, who was the first martyr in the history of Christianity. The gospel was spread beyond Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to each nation throughout the martyrdom of Stephen. The trigger of the spread of the gospel was just us. An evangelist and missionary Philip was realistically used for the gospel to spread in all of Judea and Samaria. And the gospel was relayed to all of Judea, Samaria, and Ethiopia through Philip. As you have seen from last Sunday, Saul had a change of heart through the event at Damascus. And through the team ministry of Ananias, who was one of the 70 disciples, works arose that changed Saul into Paul, who was a monumental representative and historical evangelist. These figures are in the early chapters of the book of Acts, and their stories are stunning transformation that is like a storm. However, there are hidden figures who is quietly serving, but impactfully, in this stunning time of transformation, and that is Barnabas. His name was mentioned 23 times in the book of Acts. His name means the son of comfort. That's the meaning of his name. He lived up to the meaning of his name and spread the spiritual impact. But what age is it right now? It is the age that needs comfort. So many people have scars. So many people are going the other way. Comfort is needed for all. Comfort in its literal meaning means elevating the pain and warm words and acts of kindness or consoling one's grief. Many people cover themselves to look good on the surface, but they have so many hidden scars and pains. In often cases, we hurt each other as it comes out of a certain triggering situation. People say, I want to die. Other people can't notice because they look normal, but they are in so much pain and suffering saying they want to die. There are so many scars that are hidden. That is why so many things within them are coming out upon such triggering situations. That is why there are many books published about the contents of comfort. It is about comfort. And there are also many songs about comfort. People listen to the songs and they cry so much. People say that BTS is so much of a comfort and that's why they're so famous. 
This tells us that this day is just an age that needs comfort. These days, the AI technology has advanced so much that it has opened an era of AI chatbots, which enabled natural communication with people. Hence, there are so many people seeking comfort as they talk to the AI chatbots about their pain. Because they don't pardon people. They say good words. Some people say that AI pours out their comfort. For this person, comfort is needed. It needs to be poured. So because of that, they need an AI for this. Recently, finally, there is an AI pastor that led the service in Germany. He was giving the sermon and there were people who said it was good and there were some people who said the AI has no facial expression so it doesn't feel real. But now there's an AI pastor. It is that age now. Because there are so many people getting scars through interpersonal relationships, they seek for hideouts. They're looking for hideouts. During a time like this, the church needs to have true and evangelical comfort that revives each other. It's different from the world. We have been doing the three movements and the group of three. The ministry of a group of three is actually the ministry of comfort. It is the ministry of healing scars of each other and giving evangelical comfort for the members to stand firmly at the church. This is called the ministry of Barnabas. The movement of start 10,000 and the group of three are the ministries of Barnabas to help the new believers and long-term absentees to restore worship and have a sense of belonging to the church. His nickname was born because Barnabas handled the ministry of true comfort at, as his name applies. If Ananias was as a starting point of Apostle Paul to stand as an evangelist of the times, it was Barnabas who opened the way for him to appear at the front of restraint history in earnest. Through today's word, in the name of the Lord, I bless all members of the Yewan Church to first take role of the spiritual Barnabas and to move to a place where we can save each other. May it be a worship that you are resoluted in this. Number one, Barnabas who embraced people. The scene where Barnabas first appeared in the book of Acts is shown in chapter four. After Peter proclaimed the gospel message, more than 8,000 Jews returned to the Lord by simple calculation alone. Looking at the culture at the time, when the number of men it was counted, it is safe to say that there were more than 20,000 people, including the children and women. In particular, many of the people who were saved were not the Jewish leaders alone who had vested interests and dominated politics and economy at this time. It was also those who needed help the handicapped, the poor, those who are in the midst of hardships. In the end, the church had to take care of them because they were rushing to the church. So at the time, those with fields and houses sold it and brought to it to the apostles. 
and the relief ministry was carried out through it. Amongst them was Barnabas. Acts 4, 36-37 reads, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field he owned and brought the money and put it in the apostles' feet. Barnabas belonged to the Levites. His original name was Joseph. In verse, in chapter 13, it can be seen that Paul and Barnabas, his first mission was Cyprus. Barnabas was also a Hellenistic Jew. He was a Diaspora Jew. According to the text, the apostle nicknamed Barnabas instead of his original name, Joseph, indicating that he served besides the apostles and was a consolation ambassador who healed and restored many souls. This is what Barnabas did. As a pastor, when I see people making clicks and breaking up people, I feel Oh, he's like a demon. But if there is a person who makes this person become one trying to be together, those who are really serving for revival, they're like angels. Oh, that person is so precious. They're like treasures being so precious. Even as a pastor, I'm like this, but what about God? being a peacemaker. Wherever you go, making it be peaceful. Filling each other's needs. Letting down pride and serving. You must have Galatians 2.20 having that sacrifice. I'm sorry to say this, that's what I did when I was a church land leader, making people become one. They were having all separate organizations, but upon those conflicts, I have gathered all the elders and we went to the mountains 100% with my own money. And we sang praise. And looking at each other, we were sitting, but they were all looking the other way, not even looking at each other. But then I told the pastor, oh, pastor, I'm going to have oneness. But the pastor said, oh, it's not really going to work. And I said, it's going to work. And we were singing praise together, but they were looking the other way. There was a big sauna and we went in all naked and we were playing Eden and we made that atmosphere and then we came back and then everything was unraveled we were having communications with each other and having grace And I did it in secret, and then one senior deaconess held my hand and said, Oh, Elder, I know. And she said, I know what you do in order for our church to have oneness. It's not that I don't do it and tell you to do it. If I did not do this, how can I give the sermon? It would be rude for me to do so. The Holy Spirit would mock, saying, did you do it? In front of God. It was that I was so disturbed that I wanted to do it. But that heart, no matter where I go, I don't like conflict. It's like that for me, too. I would like to be together 
and make it so that people would be disciples of Pastor Yu. And Pastor Yu knows that I take care of complex, and that's why he buys me food and buys me a car, a watch. Do you know how much this is? If you know, you'll be in trials. Of course, Pastor Yu likes watches, so he receives gifts, and I receive one too. But it's not so that I would receive it. Normally, I just put on the Samsung watch, seeing how much I walked and etc. But in our lives, it's like that back then, but even now. May you live like that today. Oh, that person being like a poisonous steak. Don't do that. If you don't like someone, you'll have alkyne in your body. And you'll have a lot of diseases. So those who are bad in personality, they're not very healthy. Not all of them are like that, of course. A person of encouragement. Like Barnabas. No one knows. No one's interested. But the people who encourage other people, giving them rides, having nothing to do with their pride, God is watching. By encouragement and consolation, who is the role model? of the team of three ministry it is barnabas so where what it is the starting point for barnabas it is mark's upper room mark was the son of mary who was the older sister of barnabas so mary was also born in cyprus married in jerusalem and gave birth to mark also, Barnabas' household was very wealthy in Cyprus. That's why Mark's sister Mary had a house that was large enough for about 120 people to gather in one place. And I've actually been there. So, our missionary Chung Mishik, he was in Israel for three weeks. And he came back yesterday. And they were the Jews who came back from Russia. So he's going to be in the forefront guiding us upon the pilgrimage when we go to Israel. So, as I see, there's no exact record, but Barnabas must have been at the scene when the Holy Spirit came upon Mark's upper room. He experienced the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit and served as a minister of the Jerusalem church. He heard the gospel message proclaimed by Peter and was concluded in the gospel. In the original text, the three verbs describe Barnabas' actions as sell, take the place, and take the price, and lay at the apostles' feet, show how unhesitating and decisive his actions were. His spiritual centeredness was right and firm. Above all, he had an attitude of devotion in front of God and a heart of embracing the poor church members who were their spiritual families and the circumstances of the church. He is completely free from the self-centeredness, materialistic, success-centeredness life of Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. He was free. Only within the gospel we can be free. Acts 11 tells us that after Stephen's martyrdom, those who had been scattered went to Antioch to spread the gospel. The number of believers continued to grow, and when the apostles in Jerusalem heard about it, they sent a worker Barnabas. 
the apostles trust him enough to send to build the church on their behalf. To that extent, so the early church members, their characteristic is that they had the message. Without the message, how can they go? The church officer these days, they don't have the message. They're all a lie. You must be able to give a message like Stephen, Philip, and Barnabas. A message. Those who don't have a message, one day they will fall back. Why? Because they will crumble down. Why? Because they are not armored with the word. So Satan attacks, they will crumble down. As if they did not exist. Listen carefully. You heard the word last week. May you be able to hold on to the word. So I told you when I was a church officer, I went to a hundred churches. For seven years and seven months, I went to prisons to preach the gospel. Every week, not leaving one week behind, I gave the message. For these people, they're not even challenged. You might think, oh, pa pastor is special, but no. There was never even a second that I thought I was special. I'm being used by God, and that's why I'm being used by God, because I like the word, because it was sweeter than honey. I listened to it again and again to the point where the cassette tapes would rip apart. Dear believers, Apostles who acknowledged and trusted Barnabas. Barnabas went to the church in Antioch and provided spiritual leadership and received the same praise as the seven workers in Jerusalem. Acts 11.24 reads, For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. He was a great many people were added to the Lord. Whether he was in Jerusalem or in Antioch, Barnabas had the same heart. He was all in, focused, and had his heart that was right with God. As a result, many souls came back to the Lord through him. And particularly, it is unique that Barnabas is expressed as a good person in addition to being filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. This goes beyond what we usually think of kindness. He had no enemies. He was kind. For when we normally think about kind people, it's not a vague kind person in the world. But he was able to embrace other souls, non-believing souls, those souls who fall into trials. He was able to embrace them. A son of encouragement, he had great heart for embracing souls. There's a saying, the opposite is of love is not hate, but indifference. That's quite right. The warm comfort and love of someone who cares can truly change a person's life. But don't be able to give scars of other people. That's not being guided by the Holy Spirit. Those people of the Holy Spirit, they do not make people fall into trials. You must not do that in the church. With a trembling heart, you must success. Other people must feel, oh, that person is such a good person, because that's what comes out from inside. So doing the work of church and scolding and getting angry in the church, 
I cannot understand that. In front of God, having a church duty, how can you get angry? You must be filled with thanksgiving and joy. Oh, I'm so uncomfortable because of that person. And that person is uncomfortable because of you and you must know that. So within the gospel, when you are guided with the gospel, the walk of faith is not difficult. We need a person like this in the church. So during last Friday's prayer meeting, I emphasized the ministry of the new family committee. All new family committee ministry members should possess the same spiritual center as Barnabas. That vessel. You must have that heart. Then, when you go to church, when you go to your workplace, when you go to a unity, you'll be popular. When you see those people, you'll think them as having so much charisma. That's being fragrant full of the gospel. So it said, everyone will live when they come to Yemen Church. So it's hearing that, oh, people heard that Yewon Church is so great. I was so thankful. Why did, was that said? If people say, oh, that church is strange, it'll be a strange church. But this is just a church sanctuary, a building. You are the church. So I bless all members of Yewon Church that the spiritual news that everyone will be saved if they come to Yewon Church will spread throughout the region and the world and that Yewon Church will be the main unity of fulfillment of the covenant that possesses all the nations. Number two, Barnabas who raised people. Verses 26 to 27. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to him and them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. After receiving Ananias' team ministry in Damascus, Saul immediately testified in the synagogue that Jesus was the Son of God. When people saw Saul's appearance, they showed suspicion and were very wary, being in shock. But Saul did not care about this and gained more strength to testify that Jesus is the Christ. So many people were saying, I will not eat until that person dies. So the Jew desires who saw this were greatly shocked, but they were not converted, but rather guarded the city gate day and night to kill and catch Saul. So the disciples in Damascus put Saul in the basket and lowered him down the wall to escape. They did not want to meet him. Saul then went to Jerusalem and tried to make friends with the disciples there. 
However, the disciples were reluctant to meet Saul, thinking that he was using a camouflage tactic to catch them. It was because Saul's notary was so high that this had happened, and at this time, it was Barnabas who actively defended Saul. Barnabas took Saul to the apostles in Jerusalem and told him about his conversion to Damascus and then how he boldly spoke in the name of Jesus. The apostles who had enough trust to give him the nickname Barnabas believed in Barnabas' words and eventually Saul communicated with the disciples in Jerusalem. When Barnabas was ministering at the Antioch church, he went to Tarsus and brought Saul to Antioch. When he was in Jerusalem and argued with the Hellenistic Jews and to testify of the gospel, they tried to kill Saul, so the disciples sent Saul to Tarsus, his hometown. Go to your hometown and hide. Barnabas always had Saul in his heart and opened the door for him to minister. In his heart, he had this heart. In other words, Barnabas fulfilled the role of establishing Paul, the evangelist of the age. Barnabas and Saul taught a large crowd together in the Antioch church for a year, and the evidence arose to such an extent that the disciples were called Christians for the first time in Antioch. So when non-believers see it, they were saying, oh, that person is truly like the people of Christ. It was as if they were seeing Jesus. Those are the Christians. Barnabas did not only raise Paul, but in Acts 15, there is a scene when Apostle Paul and Barnabas split apart due to disagreement. The reason was because of Mark. Mark was with him during the first mission trip, but gave up in the middle because it was so difficult and went back to Jerusalem because he was a son of a rich family. So Paul said that he could not go with him in the second missions. That was per the personality of Paul. But Barnabas was saying, but let's give him another chance. In the end, their options could not be narrowed down, so Paul went on a missions trip to Syria and Galicia with Silas, and Barnabas took Mark with him to Cyprus. But the important thing is that Barnabas did not give up on Mark until the end and embrace him so that he could grow properly in the gospel. Later, Mark had grown spiritually to such an extent that Paul accepted Mark again and acknowledged him as a co-worker in the gospel. 2 Timothy 4.11 reads, Paul makes this request to Timothy, bring Mark with you when you come, he will be useful to me. Mark is the author who recorded the gospel of Mark, which is the first among the four gospels that we are familiar with. Just as we cannot imagine Apostle Paul without Barnabas, we cannot imagine Mark without Barnabas either. That's how significant Barnabas' ministry of raising people is. And Sarah, we need to raise people like this, like Barnabas. God works through people. Even the big companies are looking for people. There are no people because people are important. Even companies are like that. But what about God? There are so many people, there are no people. Is it sad that there are no people because there are no people? It's that there are no people to be used. It 
to the sixth son. Barnabas had shown his light upon raising people without money, without name. God works through people because one person has great spiritual influence. That department, that region, that church will live because of that one person. Why do we keep on saying remnant remnants? It is winning the spiritual fight. We need to establish our posterity, remnants, as the three summits. As you listen to the word, you should stand as the absolute disciples of Christ. We cannot do it alone. We need to become spiritual Barnabases to each other, standing side by side. How can we do this? It's by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Comforter and Holy Spirit shared the same root. In today's passage, verse 31, the expression, the comforter of the Holy Spirit is mentioned. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of comfort. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we naturally stand as a spiritual Barnabas. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means being filled with the word. Those people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, they do not bash on other people. The people of the Holy Spirit, they don't have ups and downs. The people of the Holy Spirit, they are continuous in one line. Please follow after me, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word, and prayer. Just do these three things. Just pray in this way that you would be able to be filled with these three things. God, may I be filled with these three things. May the partisan of God est be established in me. In the name of the Lord, I pray that all members of your one church will be filled with the Holy Spirit every day, carrying on the mission of saving souls and giving comfort. In 2 Corinthians 1, 34, Apostle Paul clearly states that God, that we believe in, is the God of all comfort. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by. And in Isaiah 41, the God of comfort speaks these words, comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. God directly commands us to live a life of comfort. That's why Pastor Billy Graham, who is a great evangelist, emphasized God does not comfort us to just comfort us, but he comforts us so that we may become comforters ourselves. Yes, our lives should be lives of comforting. It is the life giving gospel comfort. We should become people who can comfort and encourage others and fill the needs of the community, just like Barnabas. So even for the people of in the elementary departments, they're preparing for the three-day weekend. If that happens, the churches will be empty. So even now, we're going and having trainings trying to save the multi-ethics, and we're doing the team of three. But only I'm quiet. Is that right? The church is having a spiritual movement, but what am I doing? 
Dear Lord, may I have revival within me. Do you just want to be a spectator? Coming into the church, do you want to be lonely? In the festival, do you want to sit alone? You must be able to enjoy this party together. Amen? Spiritually, you must have that posture. In this gospel unity, may be the main figure who is able to fill that. So upon all believers of you in church, may you be the Barnabas of the sage. Let us pray. Dear Father God, upon all believers of you in church, upon the age that needs Barnabas, may they be the spiritual Barnabas. May they be able to embrace all people. May they be Barnabas who saves and raises other people. So all my problems, all the trials, may I be able to let it down. It may I be moved to having a great time schedule. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.